Well, folks, Colorado is about ready to give you the deadline. The deadline is April 5th, 2022. So, not much has changed. That's the good news. Colorado, they could have almost taken last year's booklet and just changed the date and the deadline. Not completely, but the few little things that change aren't anything real important. So, we're going to talk about that in this video. If you want way more detail than what this video is going to have, go to Go Hunt. Sign up to be an Insider member and use promo code Randy. They'll give you $50 in their gear shop. But then you'll have access to all their strategy articles and all their draw odds, all their data, all their filtering, all their maps, all that. And you'll get a lot more detail from them than what you're going to get in this quick video. So 8 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time, April 5th, 2022. And whenever I give these deadlines, I always say, oh, man, I better check and make sure. So I got the regulations right here in front of me. I just, you know, the deadlines are one of those things you don't want to miss. That's why I'm always so attentive. All right, right on the cover, there's a great big Shira's Moose. It says application deadline, primary draw, April 5th, 8 p.m. Mountain Time. All right, I feel better now that I, I triple check, quad triple check, whatever you'd want to call it. Uh, but Colorado is a very pop, very popular state because of what percentage of tags they give to non-residents. And the fact that they have 23 million acres of Forest Service and BLM land to hunt on. Uh, so, with that deadline, I want to talk about briefly what the costs are, what the upfront system is, or, or costs are, uh, then how the system works, and then a few other things. So. Uh, Colorado changed it, I don't know how long ago, seven or eight years ago, maybe only five years ago, uh, that non-residents have to have a minimum hunting license. And the cheapest one is the annual small game license, which this year is $86.50. You need a habitat stamp fee, which is another $10.59. And then an application fee for every species is going to be $9.17. And you're probably wondering, well, what's with all these, you know, 17 cents? Colorado has a CPI, a cost of living type, you know, consumer price index, CPI inflation adjustment every year. So it just rounds it off to some penny. So I'm going to use round numbers because I get tired of talking about penny. But... In Colorado, but your upfront cost for the, all those licenses and stamps is going to be a little over 97 bucks. Now, you also have to uh, know what these costs are in Colorado. So, for deer, the cost is slightly over 420 bucks. For elk, it's going to be about 700 and uh, uh, just over seven, like 701 dollars. For pronghorn, it's going to be a little over $420. Now, as non-residents, in the limited entry part of the draw, for most units, we get 35% of the tags for deer and elk. And there's no cap on non-residents for pronghorn. Yeah. So, uh, I've shot a pronghorn in Colorado. It was a really, really fun hunt. Um, I haven't been back since then. I haven't been building points. Um, Probably should start doing that, but for whatever reason, I haven't. Um, then there's, in Colorado, non-residents have a chance at moose, at mountain goat, at Rocky Mountain bighorn, and desert bighorn. And those, that price is $2,343. Ouch, that's a lot of money. But a lot of people say, oh, it's worth it. Um, I'm not going to go into this weighted point system that they use for moose, mountain goat, and Rocky Mountain bighorn. That, that's something that you can get out at Go Hunt. Know that 10% of those tags are allowed to non-residents for moose, goat, and Rockies. And then uh, they also give away a desert bighorn tag, uh, maybe two, uh, to non-residents. And that has no point system. So you think about it, they have a true preference point system for deer, elk, and antelope. They have a weighted point system 
for moose, mountain goat, and Rocky Mountain bighorns, and then they have no point system for desert bighorns. <laughs> so, uh, in this, we're going to focus on deer, elk, and antelope, uh, which is a true preference point system. Preference point system being the person with the most points ends up with the tag. So if you have 10 points and say there's one person above you with 11, okay, they give that person their tag, that person's taken care of. You and four other people have 10 points. So the five of you at that point level get a tag. And let's say there's four tags left. Now at nine points, there's 10 people. Well, they're going to do a random allocation of which of those 10 people get the remaining four tags. And they do that. Now, there's six people at that point level who didn't get a tag. And nobody below that point level got a tag. So that's how a real preference point system works. Now, understand there's a couple units in Colorado where they do a hybrid. Again, if I went into every little a rabbit hole of how Colorado does it, we would be here a long time. But just know, for most of the things we're talking about, they're going to have a preference point system. So you can just buy a point if you don't want to apply. If you look at it and say, well, I'm nowhere near the point total needed, you can just buy a point and not even have to worry about it. Uh, last year, you'll see some big changes in how the points bumped last year. In other words, what I mean by that is you have a bunch of point buyers in Colorado for deer and elk. And they're just over here on the side buying points, buying points. We never see them in the published draw reports that Colorado puts out. Well, last year, 2021, the deer, the, the deer rut was in the middle of the third season. Even the second rifle season extended somewhat into the rut. So in 2021, if you look at the point totals, it went whew, way more points than historically had been there. And the reason being is you had all these high point holders over here just buying points, buying points. And they looked at the calendar dates and said, 2021, whew, I'm jumping in. So I'm interested to see what happens in 2022. Now that we cleared out a bunch of those high point holders, is the point requirement for deer going to go back down? I think it is. But how much? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Uh, elk doesn't really have that kind of rut sort of influenced in, uh, res result or outcome where the in for elk you're having archery season which is most of september uh in the middle of that you have the muzzleloader season which is all on a draw a lot of the archery i'd say archery is a mix of over the counter and draw then you have first rifle for elk which is all on a draw and then you have second third and fourth rifle uh, second and third rifle, some of it's on a draw, some of it's over the counter. Fourth rifle is all on a draw. So you look at the elk seasons, those, the, there's a lot of seasons, right? Archery and muzzleloader, first rifle, second, third, fourth rifle. Well, then for deer, you have something very similar where you have archery, which again is most of September. Uh, you have some muzzleloader going on at that time. You have some early, what they call high country rifle going on at that time. And then you end up with mostly second, third, and fourth rifle. And those, some, some units don't have a fourth rifle. Uh, some don't have an early season. So th these are all on a draw. Everything in Colorado for deer is on a draw. There are no over-the-counter deer hunts like there are elk hunts. So let's, let's think about what that means to you uh, as it relates to elk. So with elk, people use, a lot of people use Colorado as their fallback option because of the over-the-counter units. And I looked here, I counted, I stopped counting at 90 units. So 
in the western half of the state and a few in the southeast part of the state, there are nine, more than 90 units where it's over the counter for either archery and or second rifle and or third rifle. Now you got to look, there's some, some units that might have over the counter for, our, for one, but not the other. So make sure you understand what the season types are for the unit you're looking to hunt. But just know that if you don't draw your tag anywhere else in the West, you always have this over the counter option in Colorado. Yes, it's very crowded hunting. <laughs> I know how else to say it, it's, it's crowded. Uh, but it is an option and a lot of people go and do it. So uh, with deer, like I said, there are no over the counter hunts. Now, if we look at the draw itself, absent this over the counter part, uh, I'm gonna use elk as an example. And you could go to the Colorado draw reports and you could get this same information for deer. Uh, but Colorado publishes, what were the total number of applicants? What were the total number of point buyers? What were the total number of tags issued? So I go through that every year because I want to see how much point creep there is. In other words, how is it growing? And is the total applicant pool getting bigger at the same rate as the growth in tags? If there's a reduction in tags, is the application pool, you know, what's that doing? Because that tells me how much point creep there's going to be. In states with a lot of tags, you know, over 21,000 tags, you're churning people through the system a lot quicker than in states where you only have 270 some tags, like in Utah. And I would say in Colorado, you should be able to get a quality hunt with three to five points, maybe even two to five points. And here's what I mean by that. There are some really good limited entry archery hunts that are on a draw that only take two or three points. And the value of using your points in these two, three, four, five point hunts is that there aren't a ton of people in the woods. It's a limited entry hunt. So the quality of the experience is gonna be much better than the over the counter units. So maybe you're gonna do over the counter, you know, this year, this year, this year, while well, you build three points. And then once you have three points, you're like, well, this is a unit I wanted to go hunt. You go there and you don't gotta contend with all the people. I, I mean, for me, I don't ever see myself again having more than five points for elk in Colorado. The quality of the experience of being in Colorado, you got a ton of elk, you got a ton of public land. I'm just looking for where are the hunts where I don't have as many people in the woods as I do on the second and third rifle that's over the counter or the over the counter archery. So there, there's a lot of people who are in what I call no man's land. You have 10 to 18 points. You, the quality of hunt you're going to get with 10, 12, 15 points isn't much different than the quality of the hunt you're going to get with four or five points. And those people with those double digit points, you know, 10 to 18, you're never going to catch the curve. This system in Colorado has been in place since I think 1987 or 88. So there are people out there with over 30 points. So if you're at 15, you're never going to catch those people and get in on one of these really high demand hunts up in the northwest corner of the state. So think about that when you apply in Colorado. Colorado does a better job churning people through this preference point system just because they give away so many tags to non-residents. Now, I will tell you that in the last year, since we did this video last year, Colorado Parks and Wildlife has been holding, I'll call them open houses, or at least seeking comments about how much non-resident hunting pressure they want to continue to have. Will they always give away 35% of their tags to non-residents and be that generous? I don't know that they can. Their population is booming, booming, booming. They have to look after their residents. So I think eventually 
non-residents, we're probably going to be capped on the over-the-counter hunts and our 35% of limited entry tags is going to start going down. Just how it is. I mean, when you have a state like Colorado growing as fast as they are, they got to take care of their residents. So, um, a few other things I want you to know. Uh, you got to be, for youth applicants, uh, you have to have passed hunter education and you have to be 12 uh, by the time I, I look at the regulations. This is something that changed a couple years ago. If you have a youth hunter, just make sure that they're 12 by the required date. I, I don't want to say that without triple checking here. Uh, if you were born after January 1st, 1949, you have to have passed hunter education and you could get checked for that out in the field. So have it with you. Um, let's see. Oh, state trust land. Colorado has a lot of state trust land. Those are those little blue sections, powder blue sections you see on your map. In Colorado, you are not allowed to hunt those without permission of the lessee. And you're like, wait a second, that, that's land owned by a, a state entity, the state land board. Yep. And the only way you can hunt it is if you have permission of the lessee. Now, in some cases, the lessee is Colorado Parks and Wildlife. I think they lease 10 to 12% of those lands, or at least lease the, ac the hunting access. So the other 80 some percent, you gotta talk to whoever is leasing that in order to get permission. And a lot of times you're not gonna get permission on that. So don't build a hunting plan based on going and hunting the state trust land in Colorado. Uh, and let's see, what else do we have? Weapons restrictions. Yeah, Colorado has a lot of weapons restrictions, especially for muzzleloader, some for archery. Go and read those in the regulations. It's pretty restrictive, especially in the muzzleloader seasons. A lot of people show up and they're like, oh yeah, I brought my muzzleloader from, you know, wherever. And they're like, whoa, can't use that. Um, so you can return tags. Uh, they have a return list actually for people who return their tags. I think you got to turn it if you want uh, a refund uh, and you don't want to lose your points. You won't get a point for the current year, but you got to return it I think 30 days in advance. And then that tag ends up on the reissue list. You'll start seeing that reissue list pop up usually in August, I think. Uh, so go read those regulations to see how you do it. Uh, so. I, I touched on how you can hunt elk in Colorado regularly. I say every three or four years uh, if you don't have a ton of points. Um, the, there's some, some ways to, I, in my mind anyhow, to think about ways to hunt deer and, and with fewer points. And Colorado issues this, they publish their five-year season date structure. So we know what that is five years out. And trust me, a lot of higher point holders are saving and waiting for the premium dates on that calendar. Burn your points. If you're a lower point holder like I am, I only have, I think, two or three in Colorado. Kind of look at that and you can predict a little bit what the high point holders are going to do and jump in there and hunt before them or on dates that maybe aren't going to be the premium dates but you're still gonna be hunting deer in some really, really good units in Colorado. Maybe it's just not the absolute premium dates, but they're still usually pretty darn good dates. And know that Colorado, hands down, is the best mule deer state in the West. There is no state that has the quality, quantity, and opportunity and generosity to non-residents as Colorado does when it comes to mule deer. So uh, I'll, I'll be interested to see what happens in 2022. Um, I, you know, with the big spike and all the high point holders burning deer points in 2021, I'm thinking that there's going to be a drop. Now, is it going to be a 20% drop in points? Uh, uh, I don't know for sure. But the, the dates this year are still pretty darn good. They're only one day, one day different than last year. So if you got the points, go spend them. Don't, don't be a point collector. 
I, that, if there's one thing from all these videos, don't be a point collector. Be a hunter. Go and hunt. Colorado is a great place to do it. Yeah, it's going to cost you some money. Yeah, you got a deadline of April 5th, 2022 at 8 p.m. But go do it. And if you want way more detail than what I've provided here, go to Go Hunt, sign up for Insider, use promo code Randy. They'll give you a $50 credit in their gear shop, and you will be able to spend hours and hours and hours manipulating data, searching, doing all the things that we kind of nerd out on, and you'll have this entire map suite available to you, and hopefully you'll go hunting in Colorado this year. Good luck.